Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Buffalo Wild Wings for the Coach Kelly Wells Show. And I'm Charlie Pinson along with Coach Kelly Wells. And Kelly, we want to start off by sending our uh, condolences and best wishes to Rick Bentley and his family. They lost his dad, Harold, on Saturday. Harold, also a big fan of UPIC basketball, been to a lot of games. And uh, just our heart goes out to our friends. Yeah, absolutely. These are, these are times where family and friends are so critical. And certainly Rick is and Harold have been both huge components of our basketball program for since I've been here. And uh, it's going to be hard to get through and not seeing him at the games. And he's been struggling. He's had about three years. He's really been battling. And uh, you hate to see someone suffer of that nature. And we know he's in a better place today. And it's hard on their family, regardless of how ready you're, you are for those things. So tonight we'll uh, celebrate his life. Uh, you and I both will yes. go out there and um, – just, just be family. That's that's all we can offer and, and offer prayers and love, and that's certainly what we'll do. That's all we can do. Like I say, Harold's better shape than we are. But, uh, well, let's talk a little bit of basketball. You've had a really good road trip, two big wins. Yeah, we there, there's no such thing as must wins this time of year, but there certainly are critical wins. And this week was a critical uh, trip for us. And, you know, there was only at that point four games have been won on the road, and we won two of those this weekend. So, that's a great feat for our team and just love the fight we had in us. And we talked about Saturday against Georgetown, how we caught them on their best night and then we didn't fight. So, like, that's a bad combination. And uh, we didn't have any of that in us on Thursday, Saturday on the road. We were road tough. We did the things we needed to. Uh, we had some guys play uh, awesome. Luke Leahy has played the best basketball he's played in his career. And certainly it gives us a lot of confidence because it gives us opportunities to play inside out. And, you know, you've got to guard JV and De La Cruz all the time. They have to put somebody on him and uh, strictly take him away. And uh, when we have Luke scoring in the paint, that gives us opportunities to kind of shake him free. And, you know, our other guys are starting to play too. I mean, we didn't shoot the ball great any night. Uh, like Javante and Chase both did not shoot it well at life. All of them shot it pretty well against Cumberland's. Uh, we just have to have them continue to play. And Jazz Parker's plays continue to increase and get better. Uh, just finding Darrell uh, matchups is going to be important for us down the stretch. But really, really proud of our team and did so much good stuff. And I just I can't say enough about the fight we had on the road uh, to try to sneak out those victories. Well, Luke Leahy, you got the uh, Mid-South Conference Player of the Week and probably to be nominated for National Player of the Week, to, uh, 28 and 17 average, I think it was. Yeah, he, he just has been like a man child, like just demanding the ball. Uh, anybody that gets 18 rebounds a game, like that shows how committed they are to trying to help our team win. And uh, he's just a, a very likable young man. The guys all root for him. He's easy to cheer for. Uh, just did a great job. I'm so I'm so proud of him. And and that's an individual honor for his play. But if his teammates weren't with him, like we wouldn't have yes. an opportunity to to get those awards. So like he'll be up for National Player of the Week. Uh, I hope he can have a chance to get that. His numbers are are awesome. But there's a couple kids that had good weeks too outside of our okay. our league. But uh, hopefully he'll be in the running for that. And that's we don't really look for those individual awards. They just come along kind of as we as we go and. You know, JV and De La Cruz is 12 points away from his thousand. So uh, we've got some neat things individually to celebrate, but none of that's worthwhile if you don't have a good season or win. Well, that's true. That's, and uh, Kelly, I guess we're ready to go to the highlights of this week's games. All right. Here we go. Nice new graphics coming up. These are great. And here we are on the road. A uh, great opportunity to kind of see our ball spacing here and just gives you a little example of, of how good Luke's been playing and how unselfish our team has been to, to throw him the ball. And he catches us in the paint, and really he uh, he dominated this game on the on the inside. Just a nice, smooth play. Got in there, and, and nice little hook shot. And uh, here we are, and Chase Parsley gets a steal. And uh, he just is very good when he has freedom to kind of roam and do his thing. He does better most, and did a great job of finding people in the open court like he always does, and leads us in assists, and there's a reason for that. we got guys who can make shots when he's, he's doing it, and Jay with a great move away from the basket. Should have been a foul and an and one, but a, a great job finishing the basket, and here we are on a set play, and uh, we get a little backdoor action for a four-man. This was, this was a turning point in the game. We needed a good bucket, and a uh, great screen by JV and De La Cruz and, and got Xavier a, a very, very nice uh, layup. And here we are at some inside-outside stuff, and uh, love the opportunities we're getting here in this inside kick to Jazz Parker, who's a very, very good shooter. We just can't get him encouraged enough to shoot it all the time, but uh, certainly playing much better for us. And here we are on some of our ball screen action, and uh, Javian drives off a ball screen here and does a great job of snaking through the defense and finishes at the rim. That's the thing about Jay. He can score at every level, inside, outside, at the free throw line. So uh, he's got a great, great game. And uh, here we are with uh, Stan Perrin, or this is Javante, I think, in this clip. Javante Carlton in the corner gets a three and an and one. A uh, big-time shot for us. wasn't a, the best taken shot, but it went in, and coaches move on when they go in, and you yell at them when they don't. But a uh, great one for him. And here's Stanley. And when Stanley gets playing off two feet and, and gets to the paint like that, we were, we're all for him making those. And 
Uh, he played huge for us at, at Cumberland's. Had a great, great game and very helpful in that win. And here we are again off of some uh, ball screen action late in the game. Chase finds uh, Luke with a great finish at the end. That really kind of secured the game for us down the stretch by being able to use a, a one-two punch to get Chase the ball and, and finding Luke on the inside. He just finished the game off at the free throw line, at the paint, just about anywhere we could get him. Well, I tell you, great to see those kind of plays. It looks like it's time to take our first break. We'll be back to talk about next this week's games in just a few moments on the Coach Kelly Wells Show live here at Buffalo Wild Wings. Welcome back to the Coach Kelly Wells Show live here at Buffalo Wild Wings. We're here with Evan Faulkner, assistant coach uh, for the U-Pike Bears. And, Evan, just tell people a little bit about what you do in your position. Yeah, like, like you said, Charlie, I'm an assistant coach here. This is this is my third year here on staff. Uh, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, we're this time of year it's mostly about preparation, game planning. Uh, We've got Lindsey coming up. I've, I've spent the last two days watching film on them and, and, and trying to help uh, the rest of our staff put together a plan for for attacking them on Thursday. Um, and then, you know, there's a, a lot of different things we do uh, outside of season from a recruiting standpoint. We obviously are, are constantly helping our guys uh, on the academic side of things. We each uh, monitor three or four of our guys academically and make sure that they're taking care of business there. Uh, player development is a big part of my responsibilities here. I, I work uh, primarily with the guards, so uh, in and out of season we're doing workouts three, four days a week, and then I'm also coaching the guards in our practices. Uh, so you know, there's a there's a bunch of different things that we do. We're we're kind of a jack of all trades here at this at this level. So um, fortunately, we have a lot of help. We're, we're very well staffed, so uh, we all just kind of get a piece of everything and, and and try to help our team be as good as we can. I know I was in the office, you were breaking down the film, getting ready to put together a video for everybody to look at and see what's going on. Tell us a little bit about what we can expect from Lindsey. Yeah, so they're, they're, they're one of the top three-point shooting teams in our league. They, they really made it difficult on us last, last time we played them because they shot it so well. I think they were 12 for 23 from the three last time we played. Uh, and at times they'll have four guys out there that are 40-plus are percent three-point shooters that uh, really spread you out. And, and uh, then they've got a kid, Shaq Laney, that, that – uh, we'll handle the ball a lot for him. That's more of a driver than a shooter, but uh, they put him in a lot of ball screens and and force you to guard him one on one with with those shooters around around him. So they're a very very difficult matchup for us. Obviously, uh, the last game we played against them did not go as well as we had hoped. It's going to be very important that that we limit their opportunities from the three point line. And then uh, they got some big kids in there that rebound it well offensively. They're taking a lot of long shots, which will end in a lot of long rebounds. So. Uh, you know, our, our ability to defensive rebound and then get out in transition will be important. I think uh, really what you're talking, you're saying that they really like to play off the screens to get those shooters open on the outside. And then when they go, when it goes outside, they go inside, uh, outside in more than inside out. Correct, correct. They shoot more threes than anybody in our league. They've got a five man that uh, did not play the first semester that has made a big difference in their team in conference play. He is uh, he has hit 14 threes in nine games in the league at 46%. So, uh, you know, Luke, Rail, Stan, those guys that are acclimated to guarding primarily around the basket have to come out on the floor and, and challenge him a, as a shooter, which is, you know, something that we don't have to do all the time. Uh, you know, it takes away some rim protection for us. Uh, so, again, just, just a very difficult matchup. It, it's, uh, they're, they're presenting some issues that, that we don't have to face all the time. Well, tell us a little bit about you. I know you've got a twin brother that's actually yep. a coach in this league as well. Yep. Yeah, Ethan uh, is my twin brother. He's an assistant at Cumberland's. We actually came into the league the same time. Uh, previously, he had worked at Northern Kentucky University as, a, as an assistant and then at Mount Vernon Nazarene up near Columbus, Ohio, another NAI school. So uh, he, he came into the league the same time I did, and, and uh, we've had a good time with it. We, uh, we talk a lot and, and – uh, you know, bounce ideas off each other uh, from some of these game plan things that we talk about. Obviously, we're playing the same teams in the league and uh, seeing a lot of the same folks. So uh, we spend a lot of time talking and, and, again, bouncing ideas off each other as, as far as, you know, what's best and maybe what worked for them, what didn't work for them, and, and he does the same with us. Tell everybody where you're originally from. Yeah, I'm from Sandy Hook, Kentucky, you know, eastern Kentucky, northeastern Kentucky, Moorhead, Ashland area, so uh, not too far from home. And you say, what your mom and dad do? Uh, my dad works for the Postal Service, and my mom has uh, spent her entire life in banking. She she recently moved to uh, Myrtle Beach, uh, which has been kind of a dream of hers for a long time. But uh, she is managing a bank there, and, and both are, are nearing retirement, I think, probably three or four more years. And uh, my dad uh, is, is kind of going through the basketball thing again. I've got an 11-year-old brother who is uh, starting to uh, – well, not really starting. He's been doing it for a few years, but, but they're doing the travel thing again. And 
Uh, he's an assistant coach with the high school team there, so he's very involved in, in, in the game. And um, they, they get up here three, four, five times a year and watch us play. So um, they come from a very good support system. So you get the love of the game from your dad? That's right, yeah. Uh, and it, uh, he, he spent a lot of time in the gym with us when we were young and uh, has kind of always been involved. Actually didn't start coaching until after I finished playing, uh, you know, with, like I said, Elijah coming up and then, uh, starting to really like basketball, uh, he has he has got into the coaching side of it and, and helps coach their team, help coach the high school team. He's he's in and out of the gym all the time. Well, that's great stuff. Uh, so, what do you like about Pikeville? You know, it's it's obviously nice for me to be close to home. Uh, spent most of my college time pretty good distance away from home, and then uh, spent a couple years, three years professionally, um, a little farther away. So so being back close to home is is certainly nice for me. And then obviously the leadership we have with our program and Coach Wells, you know, getting to work for him and, and with Coach Compton and the rest of our staff. Uh, I feel like, uh, you know, there's not probably not a better guy in this business to work for and, and learn from. And uh, I really feel like uh, as far as athletic programs go, we're, we're about as solid and, and positioned to, to win as good as any of them. So um, obviously that's important. You you know, you want to be part of something that, that uh, is special and that you feel like you can – uh, believe in and, and I do that here and believe in Coach Wells uh, very much. So just thankful and blessed to, to be a part of it. You know, Kelly's got a really good uh, program going here and he also has a really good reputation sending out quality coaches and got a good coaching tree. Yeah, and there's, you know, that's not by coincidence. You know, you're learning from one of the best and, and he's been a part of this as a player and a coach for a very long time. He's, he's worked for, with, and, and uh, I think he would tell you he's been blessed to have good assistants too that, that uh, you know, not only has he helped, but they've helped themselves. So uh, just just been around it a long time, and, and uh, you know, we all really, really believe in him. I appreciate you stopping yeah, by. Absolutely. Thank you, Charlie. And we'll be right back on the Coach Kelly Wells Show live here at Buffalo Wild Wings. Welcome back to the Coach Kelly Wells Show live here at Buffalo Wild Wings. We're with Ty Compton, associate head coach uh, at the University of Pikeville. Ten years, really. Tenth year this year, yes, sir. Hard to believe, isn't it? It goes quickly. Uh, Ty, tell us a little bit of what you do as a associate head coach. Yep, I um, really, I guess it starts with recruiting, probably the most important part of it. Um, do a lot of the recruiting uh, out on the road quite a bit. Um, also have uh, some responsibilities with scheduling, with scouting, uh, player development, practice planning um the, that's the good thing about working for coach wells he lets us have our hands you know a little bit in every fire so to speak and we we get total on job experience and we get to dabble in just about every part of the program but with kelly i mean you're basically his right hand man sure. whatever he needs mm -hmm. done you're, you're the guy yeah we, we have a good dynamic we work well together we uh you know we've we've been together so long that i can kind of you know i kind of know what he's thinking a little bit at times before he says it and, and vice versa so you know i'm, I'm able to Filter some things maybe throughout the day uh, that that necessarily don't need to go to his plate that I can uh, I can take off of there because I I kind of know what he's going to do or want to want to do with that so I, I guess I you know a chief of staff so to speak and especially with him being athletic director now that's really sure. put a lot more on you I think for sure absolutely you know I, and luckily I've been around long enough went to school at U Pike as well so uh, a lot of the people know me well enough to trust me and understand that you know I do have a little bit bigger role than just an average assistant coach so. Uh, you know, I'm able to shoulder a little bit more of the load maybe than, than some others can, and then thankfully he's given me that responsibility as well and allowed me to do so. I know you're also into uh, scouting. I think you've got the uh, the weekend scout for us. I do, yeah. We, uh, the way this, the schedule set up, the whole first rotation of conference play, I had the Thursday scouts and Coach Faulkner had the Saturday scouts, and then now in the second rotation, those flip. So now I'm, I've got the weekend route, and, and he's having to get ready early in the week. So. Uh, don't know which one's better, really, but it, it's equal amount of work both yeah. ways. You just kind of got to do a lot of yours last minute For after sure. the Thursday night game. For sure. You do as much as you can, mainly film stuff from the past, uh, past three or four games leading up to the Thursday games, and then you watch the Thursday game, kind of see if they've changed anything or not, and then you can you can kind of adjust, you know, on Thursday night, Friday, and then you have to have that thing ready by practice or shoot around on Friday to, to try to implement an entirely different game plan than you've worked on the entire week. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about what we can expect out of Saturday. Cumberland, Tennessee is extremely, uh, extremely athletic, extremely good. I mean, they, they're very, very talented. They've been very talented for the last two or three years. Um, they just have trouble winning right now. They've played everyone in the conference extremely close, including us. We won by seven here in our first game. Um, they, they've got a power forward that may be one of the better players in the league, uh, elite shooter on the wing. So, I mean, it's going to be tough. Going down there is always tough. We had a really tough game there last year. 
Uh, Mike Chambers led us in the second half, brought us back from way down to, to get a last second win at Cumberland last year. So it's going to be going to be a challenge for sure. But, you know, the way our guys are playing lately, I'll, I'll take our, our guys over anybody. Uh, Luke Lahue, I mean, he's he's really come on here in the last believe, three or four games, last two especially. Absolutely. You know, we couldn't have asked for a better performance Thursday or Saturday from him. Uh, you know, he, it took him a while to get comfortable this season, but, you know, I think there's been only three or four games this entire year that he's not had double-figure scoring efforts. And, uh, you know, he's really turned it on rebounding the last four or five games, and that's really what he was missing, the piece he was missing. He was a great box-out guy, but we had to get him pursuing those rebounds to try to, to not only keep his guy from getting him, but we wanted to get him to get his hands on him as well. And he's done a much better job of that the last four or five games. Ty, let's tell people a little bit about you. I know your ties to UPIC run pretty deep. You, you and your sister, your sister's actually a Hall of Fame member here at UPIC. I, uh, you know, I'm, I'm from Grundy, Virginia originally, so I'm not very far away. Um, got to come down and, and uh, spend my time here and, and uh, you know, went to school for, for two years, a year and a half here before I got in with Kelly, and I worked with, uh, with Coach for 10 years now. Um, started as an undergrad, met my wife here. She was a cheerleader, Lisa. Um, I got to spend some time with, with uh, you know, just about everybody that's on campus still. You know, we've been through several different administrations, but in terms of people in the athletic department, there's a lot of, that are still here that, that were here when I started, a lot of professors on campus when I started. So uh, the familiarity has been good, and I've been blessed to be able to stay in one spot, you know, my entire coaching career and move up the ranks that way. And I uh, couldn't have asked to be in a better situation, a better program, and work for a better guy. I know your mom and dad get to come over and watch uh, Absolutely. quite a bit. Yep, they, they do. You know, dad... My, my parents both coached basketball uh, when I was younger, and that kind of is what got me into it. And, um, you know, just the, the desire for sports. They love sports. They love to be around it and love to see the team. They're, they're totally invested just as much as, as we are in the team and, and uh, love to come over and, and give us support as much as they possibly can. Uh, what do you like about Pike? What brought you to Pikeville to start with? I had, uh, I had initially went to play football at Kentucky Christian University, um, and that didn't work out for me. Just, just something just wasn't right. I was missing something, and, and I went back home to try to figure what that was and got a two-year degree from a junior college back home and was trying to decide what was important to me at that time. And, and staying close to home was important, and, and Pikeville was always a place that I'd come to when I was younger. And um, I had a cousin that had, had graduated from Pikeville and had coached middle school basketball here in the county, so that kind of leaned me to come to this area and Came to school here, began working with him as an assistant coach my first year in school here, and then kind of made the leap over with Kelly the year after that. But just proximity to home and, and familiarity. I had a lot of friends from high school that, that also had come here straight out of high school uh, a few years before. So just familiarity more, more than anything, and that's really what's kept me here as, as long as it has as well. Well, Ty, looks like we're coming to the end of our seat. Appreciate you stopping by with us, and uh, we'll be right back with Coach Kelly Wells on the Coach Kelly Wells Show live from Buffalo Wild Wings. Welcome back to the Coach Kelly Wells Show live here at Buffalo Wild Wings, and we're back with Coach Kelly Wells and Kelly. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the standings and, and where we're headed. Yeah, th this weekend was good for us. It got us tiebreakers with both Cumberland, Tennessee, as well as uh, getting in with life. So we won both of those, so we had the tiebreakers for those if it gets down to a tiebreak situation. Uh, we're one game out of first place. Georgetown's in first. We're in second, and there's a tie for uh, for third. Uh, but as you know, our league is very good, very deep. You know, even Lindsey Wilson, Cumberland, Tennessee, they've just lost some tough games down the stretch, and they can beat anybody at any time. Shawnee State the same way. So our, our league is very, very good. It's going to be deep. Campbellsville is starting to play better again. They lost those four in a row that kind of dropped them out of the, the top 30. Uh, but I think they'll be right, right back in the mix with some wins. So for us, it's important to, to do well in these last five games. We've got three, three home games, two road games. So we've got to do really well. Uh, this week would be huge for us if we could find a way to win at home against Lindsey Wilson, go on the road to Cumberland, Tennessee, and win. That would be huge. Uh, that would put us in a great position going down the stretch uh, in the league. And, and, again, none of them are must wins, but certainly they're all Thursday, Saturday games we got to win. So if, if we do well in those, I think it puts us in a position to secure some great postseason opportunities. And then you get into conference tournament, it's here. Uh, we got to take care of business there. It's going to be on the yeah. first, second, third, and fourth. Uh, the women will play first, and then we'll, we'll come in. Uh, and then the national tournament, we actually have a two-week break uh, to get to the national tournament. So hopefully we get an opportunity to do that, but you can almost change a lot of your system in two weeks. So, like, we can have some opportunities to really have some fun in Kansas City, do some things different if we can get ourselves in a position to do that. So uh, that's the challenges. That's the goals for us. Uh, a lot of expectations. But, again, five, five more games, we want to go 1-0 and oh five more times. You know, that's one of the things that you've always stressed here. You know, you want these kids to expect 
to win. You know, we don't want to hope to win. You expect to win. You expect to win every game. You take it one game at a time, but you expect to win every night you go out. Yeah, we, we kind of call them one-game championships. And, you know, if you take care of business, winning is a byproduct of doing a whole lot of things right. And it's no different in a in a season, in a, in a game set, setting, in a scenario of getting to the postseason. you got to take them one at a time. Every one of them is just as important as the next one, and that's why every Thursday we say, you know, this is the biggest game of the year. And then Saturday, this is the biggest game of the year. And it just continues to go, and that's real in our league. I mean, it's <laughs> – it's a tough one. So if we'll take care of us, we can't really worry about what anybody else is doing because we have no control over that. So we just got to take care of us. One game championships, one to know each night, and I think that'll put us in a great position at the end. Well, so people understand it. I mean, you know, if you win to win the automatic bid, is that the conference tournament? Yes, it is. Okay. In, in in our league, normally, you know, I would be shocked if we don't get minimum of three teams in. Some years we've gotten up to five teams in. So. Uh, this year the rating has been kind of strange, and there's been a couple of raters that have not been real educated in their in their voting. We've got to get them up to, up to par uh, on our league at least. So uh, I, th I think we'll be fine, but it's it's going to take some education. And and I think the history of our league in the national tournament, the success we've had, the national champions that we've had, uh, brings a strong statement. Not many many conferences can can say that. So I think we carry a heavy stick when it comes to rating into the into the national tournament. So hopefully that'll play true. And we should, you know, because we've had. Numerous champ champions out of this league. We've also had, but we also had numerous teams come in that have had a chance to win a championship, even if they didn't. Yeah, if you win our league, you've got a legit chance to win a national championship. Yes. There's no gray area about that, and and certainly that's no different this year. Uh, there are a lot of great teams in our in our division. There there are some in in, in California that are amazing talents. There's there's good teams everywhere in, in Montana. That like we have some great basketball. Uh, but that's no that's no slight to us. We've got great basketball here too, and we travel and, and perform at the highest level too. So uh, it's a great association. Uh, it, it's just getting the right teams in Kansas City. Normally we get them, uh, maybe one or two at the very cusp of that going in and out that we miss on. But for the most part, the best teams get to Kansas City, and it's one of the greatest tournaments. I'm just I'm, I'm shameful that in 2020 it's not going to be the same way. It's going to be be moved around, and that that kind of hurts me to the core a little bit. But Nonetheless, it is what it is, and uh, we're going to enjoy it at the way that's the, the greatest tournament in, in college basketball. I mean, you got you you love basketball. It's the place to be. They start at eight o'clock in the morning our time, and who knows when they're going to finish? Yeah. Two, three o'clock in the morning it, it, sometimes. It could be, and then you have turnaround again the next day. And uh, it is called the toughest tournament in basketball because it is. Like if you can manage to advance on that. Uh, it's amazing. But the great part is if you're playing well, you want to play like that. Like you just want to keep playing and playing and playing. If you're not playing well, you just get one opportunity to do that yeah. anyway and you're bounced out. So uh, it is a tough tournament, but as a player's perspective, that's all you do is play. So like you get opportunities to prepare, play, prepare, play, uh, and it's just so much fun. You know, Municipal Auditorium is the greatest yes. uh, arena outside of Rupp Arena that I've ever played in. I love it. I think it's one of the greatest places to play. The history is great. Um, you can just feel it when you go in there. Just a great, great atmosphere. It is. I mean, you know, and I've been I've been blessed to be able to go with you several times, and it's just amazing that the the amount of the people in Kansas City embrace it so much. Well, they they do a great job of having honorary coaches, and there's people that have stakeholders in that business wise in town. They do a great job of game day management, and there is a lot of a lot of foot traffic. We have the schools, the local schools come and bring their children in and their kids in to come watch it, and it becomes a tradition for them. In Kansas City, they they expect to have people there. It's almost like the state tournament for us. Like everybody just goes to the state tournament. They bring their kids. They they just grow up doing that. Uh, and in Kansas City, it's it's an NAI national tournament that's been there for a long time, and uh, the tradition really is a great tradition. Kelly, two cup games, as we say every week, two tough games coming up. You know, we've got to finish out strong these last five. Yeah, we're, we're excited about the opportunities. We know how hard it is. Uh, I do believe our guys have figured out some things that they needed to figure out. Uh, a couple of those lessons have been hard to learn, and uh, we had to suck it up and, and figure it out. But we've continued to fight through that, and I think uh, we'll, we'll overcome a lot of things with just the fight, the fight and the drive and the expectation of winning. Kelly, we'll, get back to, we'll go back to basketball come Thursday night. So for Coach Kelly Wells, this is Charlie Pinson. We'll see you Thursday night. This is Kelly Wells Show live from Buffalo Wild Wings. Yeah. <laughs>